The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Today I'll be covering strategies and techniques for locating early season salmon on the fly by targeting leading points. And the techniques we'll cover today will up your chances for early season salmon on the fly. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. The bait is busting right here. I'm watching these early season, early July coho just putting on that weight on anchovy. And they love these leading points because you've got a hundred feet of water where these fish can, much like still waters, be off the shoal, up, eat, back. I like using that engine and sometimes backing up just to make sure that shooting head gets down into the zone. I want to be on the lip, that transition, where those coho move back and forth, coming up to eat. There he is. Welcome to Legacy Lodge. This is a beautiful inshore bay. We're kind of waiting on the flood tide to bring in that bait close to shore. Whoa! Unbelievable, this is why you do this. It's one of my favorite hobbies over the last 20 years. Silver salmon on the fly in open salt water. Oh, unbelievable. Aren't they bars of chrome? It's one of the most rewarding hobbies that I've had in 17 years. And these are the magic, Prince of Salmon. We'll see you, buddy. There you go. One haul, two hauls, 11 o'clock. The equipment we'll be using for saltwater fly fishing for salmon in 99% of all situations, this is an anodized reel. It's an Islander LX 3.8. It's a large arbor. It holds a large capacity of number 30 backing, about 180 yards. The line we're using is a Cortland professional series 225 grain, which has about a 90 foot orange running line and a 24 foot head of 225 grains. We have a tapered leader that has got a loop to loop attachment that is 10 feet in length down to 10 pound tippet. The rods we're using are Sage XI3s. These are specially designed four piece rods that are designed for salt water use. They have special guides to resist salt water four piece. This is a number eight rod, nine foot in length. It's called the XI3 890-4. Another great technique is to feed more line. The more line you have out in that current really helps with getting down into the zone. You've got to be generally in 80% of the situations down in the 30, 40 foot zone. You let that line sink down into the zone that you're marking bait. And a strip, a slow strip. 
and at times mixing in a few fast strips. The second cast we're going to use, and one of my favorites, is back casting. If you see a fish move to the back, you want to be able to cover it. And all you need to do is just reverse the front cast. Take it, load it on the water, one, two, three, and punch it. Covering all different zones and maximizing currents, edges, and depths. There he is. In saltwater fly fishing, there's the early season, which starts about July 15th. Now you're fishing migratory fish, the fish are more spread out. You're looking for certain indicators that we'll talk about later. But as we progress into August, into the August 15th, into September, these fish are putting on a pound a week. So this same fish that's four pounds is gonna be around 10, and some of these fish going 15 to 18 pounds by the first week of September. As the fish get closer to their migratory objective of the rivers they're going home to. You can say these are, these are four, six pound early salmon. Key indicators to find these fish, if I can pick anything, the first thing I'm looking for is leaping salmon. That's key. You'll probably notice we're on two leading points. I picked the furthest leading point, and that's where these fish are. Oh, just stunning. These fish are on the feed. It's all about bait and location. Look at that fish. Aren't they spectacular? Coho on the fly in open salt water. You can see when the Pacific is like a lake, how much of this like is like still water. Just these fish have all that ocean vitality. This is to the backing twice. Unbelievable. There's no other fishing like this. That's why it's so rewarding. And in my opinion, Legacy Lodge, where it's moored in Darby Channel, near Pendleton Island, is one of the best base locations nestled in the Great Bear Rainforest to do this incredible sport of saltwater fly fishing for salmon. Chrome bright fish, July 15th it starts. Today's all about that early season fishery. Twice to the backing. Single barbless hook. Be a bit of a challenge. Same year class. Oh man, that was wild. He just. Okay. These fish are on anchovies. As that fish got closer, I just saw him spit up an anchovy. And what's amazing is after 
messing around with these early migratory, early season salmon, finding out what bait they're on. And the anchovy was exactly what you'd expect. Classic Rise Davis size. This is summer paradise, no doubt about it. You see that fish at the surface? <laughs> you can't figure out what's going on. Well, thank you for the little uh, indicator. It's good to know what they're eating. belly lift with this fish. Take the fly out. There you go. It's incredible. These fish, just to see that anchovy, you don't usually get a chance to see exactly. When you're catching and releasing these fish, it's not like still waters where you can use a throat pump. But when they regurgitate just a little bit of bait in their last little bit of battle, um, it gives you a, just a prime indicator exactly what you want to be fishing. That's a classic early season anchovy pattern. This has been an unbelievable day. Anybody that tells you that coho are not selected needs to think again. Early season coho are some of the smartest fish I've ever seen. They're as smart as any stillwater trout on the shoal. When they want to be selective, they are. Ooh, it's a nice fish. There he is right there. He doesn't quite know he's hooked yet. Fish is right there. There he is. Look at the size of this fish. If you get the chance to come up to Legacy Lodge and fish the waters around Calvert Island, they are the best saltwater fly fishing in the world. Is it gonna be easy? No. There's plenty of fishing that would be a lot easier. A couple of tandem Gamagatsu 5 aughts trolling herring will get you in a lot more fish. Your hookup ratio is much higher. But it's the fact in saltwater fly fishing that you're, you've got to have every element right. And then, you know, the rods, the reels, the lines, the leader materials, your tippet, flies. So I think that's what makes it so rewarding. But as I say, every day you go out in saltwater fly fishing, you're learning. We only learn spending time on the water. Look at this big broad back coho. That might even be a northern. Oh, I love it when the Pacific is like a lake. I think the thing I've learned today, and we'll cover the flies, but and I've got another coho coming up right here beside him. Now watch this. I don't know if the lens can see it, but there's two cohos of the same size coming right up, and the second one can't figure what's going on, because these are northerns that have moved in. So again, this is the early July that we're talking about, leading points, finding the bait, and uh, absolutely unbelievable. It's a 12 pound suffix invisalign fluorocarbon tippet. 
and a regular nine foot tapered leader. Wow, what a majestic fish. Definitely like to thank Legacy Lodge for letting us film this series on their beautiful waters just outside the Darby Channel and Pendleton Island is where their beautiful floating lodge is. And if you've got an inkling to try the hobby of saltwater fly fishing, they'd be glad to take you out. Here he is. Incredible. Saltwater fly fishing, a rewarding hobby. You get the chance, give Phil Dawson or Mick Heath a call. They'll put you into these incredible waters. There they are. Beautiful salmon. All right, let's just pop the hook out of this guy. There you go, buddy. Fly fishing any salt water involves a lot of different flies to choose from. I'm gonna to talk today about what we learned in the early season leading points that this episode is about. Um, we talked earlier about the reels, the LX 3.8 Large Arbor. We talked about the XI3 890-4. It's a number eight line. It's a soft rod, but it can really punch that 225 grain. If you're gonna move up to 325 and 425, you might wanna go up a line size to a nine weight. The line we've been using, we've been using for about 15 years. This is the Cortland Precision Subsurface 24 foot sinking tip, 225 grain professional grade. It has the dual loops that you want to look for on your fly line so that you can just tie your backing to one end to the running line and to the end of the shooting head you just loop over a 9 foot tapered leader down to a 10 pound tippet. The tippet pieces that you add on, 12 pound is what we've been using today, suffix fluorocarbon, extremely strong stuff. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate to go as far as 15. As the fishing was a little difficult today, we had to go down lighter, and whether that made the difference in conjunction with the fly choices, uh, that might have been something to consider. On the fly side, I'll break it down from the graveyard of flies, but that was our first realization of the colors that worked, which was everything on this water. If your color's off, you're not catching. Once that broke, we even switched something as close as this clouser, but would not eat it. Now, these are just bead chain eyes. Was that the factor? I don't know. You can see there's not a lot of difference in that fly, but it did make a big difference. The final patterns that we were working with, we move into the, the smaller anchovy needlefish bait fish patterns, euphosid krill patterns. So the eventual strategy was to go down to a smaller clouser with the red eyes and absolutely laser sharp hooks. And that was really the ticket. It was clousers that work today in the green with the flash, the gray over white, and that dark green over white, but laser sharp hooks and the red black eyes with the Duncan loop for the perfection loop so that that fly could articulate. I hope you've enjoyed today's show on leading points and early season strategies, saltwater fly fishing for salmon at Legacy Lodge and Rivers Inlet. The salt waters around Calvert Island near Legacy Lodge are, in my opinion, some of the best saltwater fly fishing grounds in the world for salmon on the fly. The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing lines.